Collington has won the Super 8 Massachusetts State Championship. From the Toslowski Gymnasium here on the campus of Arlington High School, ACMI Sports presents Arlington High School Boys Varsity Basketball. This afternoon, the Spy Ponders of Arlington High School tap off against the Sachems of Winchester High School. Hello everyone, I'm Don Phelan. Alex Van Thong is our camera person and producer tonight. And welcome to this telecast between the Sachems and the Spy Ponders. Spy Ponders come into tonight's game with a record of 1-3 overall. They are 0-2 in the Middlesex League. The Sachems are 3-2 overall with a record of 1-1. One and, one. and now we're having the introduction of the starting lineups for Winchester. Number 3, Philip Chagru. We have number 23, that's Omar Shaquille. We have number 32, Quinton Pinar. Pinar, excuse me. Number 24 is Tri-Captain Liam Campbell. Rounding out the starting lineup for the Sachems is number 33, Tri-Captain Gus Kraft. Head coach of the Sachems in his eighth season is John Fleming. He's assisted by Kenny Carunda, Jerry Chapman, Quinton Dale, Michael Borgasano, and Kyle Hopp. And Quinton Dale, if that name is familiar to you folks out there, he was the longtime head coach of the Sachems and now is helping out in an assistant capacity. Now we have the starting five for your Spy Ponders, led off by number 30, Marcus Jean-Jacques. He is followed by, in a very interesting introduction, with number 24, Rowan Newton. Newton averaging 14 points per game for the Spy Ponders and coming off an impressive holiday tournament. More information on that in a little bit. Number 14 is Henry Burns. Number 10 is Tri-Captain Miles Hess. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Spy Ponders is Tri-Captain Philip Cherry, number 20. Head coach of the Spy Ponders in his first season is Jack Woods. He's assisted by Mike Palladino, Kevin Lentini, Tyler Sullivan, Joe Granado, Mark Regan, and the head of basketball operations for the Spy Ponders is Tim Schuler. And now the playing of our national anthem. So schedule-wise, this was supposed to be the third home game of the season for the Spy Ponders, but the game against Melrose, scheduled to be played back on Tuesday, December 17th, was postponed due to inclement weather. So this is the Spy Ponders' second home game of the season. Of course, the first game in the year 2020. And first of all, I hope all of you viewers had a very wonderful holiday season. And I wish you all a happy and prosperous 2020 getting ready for the start of tonight's contest. So since our last contest that we televised, which was a loss to Woburn on opening night, the Spy Ponders have gone one and two. They lost a game at Lexington in overtime, and then they played in the Framingham tournament where they lost an opening round game to Worcester North in double overtime, and then they won the consolation game against Cathedral. So they come into tonight's game with an overall record of one and three. Opening tap is controlled by the Spy Ponders. This is Miles Hess, and Hess got going a little bit in the consolation game against Cathedral with 14 points. He'd been struggling a little bit from the field, but hoping that that night that he had against Cathedral will kick things off in the right direction for the Tri-Captain. Now Winchester controlling the ball. Arlington appears to be in man-to-man -man defense. 
just underway at the Tarzlowski Gymnasium. Spy Pond is playing much better than they did on opening night, and a three-point shot there is hit by number three, Philip Chagru. So the first points of the game belong to Winchester and Chagru, 3-0 Sachem's first minute of play. Winchester also appears to be in man-to-man -man defense. Pass drives, tough shot coming back with the left hand, being a left-handed player, and that allowed the defensive player, number 24, Liam Campbell, to get a hand on that and partially block that shot. Kick pass to the corner, fake, drive, possible travel, and it is a traveling violation committed by Winchester. It will be ponder ball. 6.35 remaining opening quarter, and the spy pond is trailed early on 3-0. Winchester with a little bit of pressure here against the ponders, and Arlington easily over the time. And here comes Jean-Jacques, had the ball skipped away from behind. Steal by the Sachems. Winchester patiently working the ball around. Tough three-point shot from the corner is no good. That's by number 23, Omar Shaquille. Rebound goes to Miles Hess. Hess has Newton ahead of the pack. Newton going to take the pull-up jump shot. No good. As I mentioned, Newton averaging 14 per game. Now a beautiful block from behind by Miles Hess. Knocks the ball out of bounds. It will remain Sachem ball. Beautiful defensive play by number 10, Miles Hess. I don't know why there was a shot clock reset and they're going, the officials are going to go over to the scoreboard and try to correct that due to the fact that the shot was blocked and so it should not have been a shot clock reset. And take a couple seconds off to 28. It probably seems a little light too, but Coach, Br Coach Woods appears happy with that and play will resume. Nice defensive play there by Henry Burns, and as he was trying to get ahead of the pack, a reach and foul committed by Winchester. Three point shot is off the mark for Newton. Station's rebound. Passing lane by Jean Jacques made a great defensive play. Now he ball is bobbled, bobbled around, knocked around, then a foul should be and is committed by Winchester. That foul should go against Liam Campbell. And that will result in two free throws for freshman Marcus Jean Jacques. Jean Jacques had a nice game in the Lexington game, having 16 points. Newton led the way in that game with 22. As I mentioned, Pond has lost that game in overtime by a score of 72-65. First free throw by the freshman point guard is off the mark and no good. Substitution for the Sachems, number 11, Henry Kraft into the lineup, and he replaces Campbell. I don't know if that was Campbell's second foul. I don't know who picked up that first foul. Maybe it was Campbell, and maybe that's why he's been taken out of the game with the early two fouls less than three minutes into the game. One of two for Jean-Jacques. And the Spy Ponders are on the board. First point of the game for the Ponders and Jean-Jacques. Sean is way off the mark by Winchester. Philip Cherry with the rebound. He's got Jean-Jacques ahead of the pack. Now Miles has fakes. Little round the back move. All knocked around, but Allenton maintains possession. Jean-Jacques gets the pick. Set by Burns. Now Hess is going to take the pull-up three. Just off the mark a little bit. A little bit short on that, but right on the, right on the mark. And a rebound for Winchester. Low scoring start to this game. Four and a half minutes remaining opening quarter. And the Spy Ponders trail three to one. And a little dump pass inside by Shaquille. Shot is up and no good by Penier, but he'll go in line for two. Foul committed by Philip Cherry, his first, first on the team, and Quinton Pinar at the line for two. Hey! 
first free throw is good. And there's a substitution at the table. He's coming in for the shooter. So he will remain at the table should Pinar make this. He'll come into the game. Pinar makes them both. And sure enough, number 21, Tommy Degnan, senior tri-captain forward, enters the Sachem lineup. And he replaces Pinar. 5-1 Sachems, almost halfway through the first quarter. Now Jean-Jacques, with relative ease, breaks the single man-to-man -man press by Winchester. Hess gonna take a three, it's off to the left. Henry Burns with the rebound. Burns kicks it back on Allington. Now they did not reset the shot clock on that, now they do. And now Newton to the hole, has a shot blocked from behind by Degnan. Degnan just into the game, makes an immediate impact with the block shot. A little baseline drive, a little flip shot off the window is good, and that's Gus Kraft, tri-captain for the Sachems with his first bucket of the evening. But right now, still afternoon, and now a bad hand check foul, way outside committed by Winchester's number 11, Henry Kraft. Coaches want to see aggressive defense, but they really don't like to see fouls committed 41 feet from the basket. Another substitution for Winchester, Matthew Hugh into the Sachem lineup, and he replaced Philip Chagru. So Winchester has gone at least three deep off the bench so far. Arlington yet to substitute. Here's Philip Cherry on the cut. He puts it up, and he is pushed from behind, and a foul will be called against Winchester. I believe that'll be on Winchester's number 23, Omar Shaquille, his first. And Winchester in a little bit of early foul trouble here in the first half as they have committed four team fouls to Arlington's one. Philip Cherry at the line for two. That first free throw is no good. I take that back. Now, Allington has gone to the bench, and number one, Dennis Ho, is in the lineup. He replaced Rowan Newton, and now checking into the spy pond lineup is number 21, Aiden Woog McGinty, and he replaces Henry Burns. So, two substitutions so far for the Ponders with Ho and Woog McGinty. One of two for Philip Cherry. He has his first point of the game, and the Spy Ponders trail seven to two with 3.20 remaining first quarter. Three-point shot by Dignan off the top of the backboard. Cherry corrals the rebound, looking to push it the other way. And we got lucky there. I'm the, not sure if that pass was intended for, but Jean Jacques was there to get it. Jean Jacques into the paint, kicks it out to Ho. He thought about the three, did not. Now it's going to be Cherry into the lane with the floater. No. And here comes Winchester looking to push the other way. Cherry does a good job getting back on defense. Now into the lane goes number 11. That's Henry Kraft with a little lefty flip shot, and he puts it in. And the Sachems now with their largest lead of the game, 9 2, with 2.36 remaining first quarter. Arlington yet to get it going offensively so far tonight. Cherry fakes the three. A whistle here. Let's see what we have. Looks like that foul is called against Matthew Hugh, number 12 for the Sachem. Must have been away from the ball. For Hugh, his first. And for Winchester, their fifth. So Winchester with only really one foul to give. And two more will put Arlington in the bonus. Of course, the shot clock resets on a foul like that. With Miles Hess for three, and he knocks it down. First field goal of the game for the Spy Ponders is Miles Hess's three point shot, and he slims the Winchester lead down to four. It's 9 5. Sachems. Two minutes remaining, first quarter. Rowan Martin back into the Arlington lineup. Rowan Newton, excuse me. Here's Jean Jacques to the basket. With the left hand, lays it up and in. A beautiful basket there by Marcus Jean Jacques. And the Sachems now lead by two. And Hess with the good defense, but he kicked it. So it will be Winchester ball and the rules that uh, we play here into the MIAA. And that is a full reset on the shot clock with a minute 39 remaining in the first quarter.
Good defense by Allington. 15 on the shot clock, now 12. Three point shot by Hugh, is no good. Rebound fought for. Winchester comes up with it. Oh, a nice little no look bounce pass. Count the basket. And I believe it was number 25, Andrew Murray, making the bounce pass and the basket scored by Tommy Degnan. Chance for Degnan and a three point play. A violation committed by Winchester, number 32, Quinton Pinar, and that's going to nullify any chance for a three-point play for Dignan. Coming up on the final minute in this first quarter, Ponders down by four. Oh, a little body contact there. Really was the difference of Boog McGinty being able to hold on to that ball. But play continues and we're under a minute remaining. Under 50 seconds now actually remaining. A nice little entry pass. That ball was bothered by Hess as Dignan tried to lay it in. I think Hess, I don't know if he got a piece of it, but he at least bothered it enough. Rowan Newton, three point shot is no good. Good save there by Winchester as the ball looked like it was going to go out of bounds, but I believe it was uh, 25 again. Murray had a couple nice plays here this last minute or so of this quarter. Little jump hook inside is good by Degnan. So Degnan, the tri-captain, comes off the bench and he's made an impact. One block shot and four points leading the way for the Sachems. Now steal by the Sachems with five seconds to go. Let's see if they get off a final shot. It looked like there was a little contact there as uh, McGinty, Wood McGinty tried to take the charge. He didn't get the call. Final shot of the quarter missed by Winchester, and that will be the end of the first quarter. The score at the end of the first quarter, Winchester 13, Arlington 7. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. And we're back for second quarter action. Winchester leading Arlington 13-7 as we begin play in the second quarter. Arlington with two team fouls in the first quarter. Winchester with five. Well, the foul situation favors the Ponders entering this second quarter. Try to check the lineups for you in a moment. Oh, now great defense by Arlington. Rowan Newton got in that passing lane, and because of that, the Winchester play had to change his mind on what he wanted to do and he committed a traveling violation. So for the Spy Ponders, you have number 24, Rowan Newton, number 21, Aiden Woog McGinty, number 30, Marcus Jean-Jacques, there's number one, Dennis Ho with his shot off the baseline, no good. And you have number 10, Miles Hess, the five for the Ponders, but that's about to change as number 14, Henry Burns, checks into the lineup, and he replaces Aiden Woog McGinty. And on the entry play, with the spy pawn. Oh, they had Burns maybe there on the cut, but Winchester did a good job defending it. And now no luck there on the roll for Rowan Newton. Now Newton back into the lane, no. The ball's loose and Winchester comes up with it. To the basket, blocked by Hess. Beautiful block on Kraft by Hess, resulting in a three-point shot for Winchester. That shot is no good. Marquez Jean-Jacques back the other way for the pond. Jean-Jacques has gone the distance for Arlington so far here in the first quarter. I believe Hess has as well. Hess's three is good. Miles Hess with two three-point baskets here in the first half. And he cuts the Sachem lead in half. It was six. It's now three. 13-10 Winchester. 6.40 to go first quarter. A little floater there. Is no good by Philip Chagru. Hess with yet another rebound. Is Rowan Newton yet to get on the off the off the Schneid here tonight? Arlington's leading scorer at 14 points per. Now a little throat, a jump move there by Ho, but he's called for travel.
Pass goes inside. Lewis Hose getting away with a little bit of a hold down. Then he blocks the shot. Looked like he had a hand on the back of the Winchester jersey. That's number 33, Kraft. There's two Krafts, I believe. Kraft Henry and Kraft Gus. I'm not sure if they're related or not. Now a three-point shot there. There it goes for Rowan Newton. He's off the board, on the board, excuse me, with a three-point shot. And this game is now tied at 13. Oh, ho, almost had the steal. Three-point shot off the backboard is no good. Winchester Dave will come up with the offensive rebound. Now a little move. Again, looked like a little shirt grab by Ho. He's getting away with that, which is good. Oh, maybe a travel there. Winchester resets the offense. They find themselves tied for the first time tonight. Well, since we were 0-0. And now Arlington with a chance for their very first lead. Arlington has not led at all in this game. Here goes Newton to the basket. Strong move, lays it up and in. And Arlington has the lead. Rowan Newton has the last five points for this by pawn as he has turned a 13-10 deficit into a 15-13 advantage. Ho with great defense from behind. Got a hand on that pass, but the loose ball comes to the Sachems. Now a good strong move inside. No rebound put back up and in. A nice job there by Tommy Degnan. Degnan now with a half dozen, and the game is tied again at 15. Nine of Arlington's 15 points in this first half have come via the three-point field goal. Two by Hess and one by Newton. Here's Ho, he's gonna take the pull-up baseline jump shot. He likes that shot, and he hits that shot. He took one earlier tonight that was just off by a little bit, and that time he buries it. Spy Pond has reclaimed the lead. 17-15, 4-14 remaining first half. Shaquille for three. He's been jacking them up, but he hasn't been making them. Now, good defensive play there by Philip Chagru. Got his hand in that long pass that looked like it was going to make it through for an easy two for Allington, but Chagru had other ideas and knocked it away. Now here comes Quinton Pinar back into the Sachem lineup. And also number 12, Matthew Hugh. Pinar, I don't know what they list him as height-wise, but Pretty tall kid, he's just a sophomore now. A timeout called, I believe by Arlington. Let's see, yep, Arlington takes the timeout. First timeout taken in this game by either team. With the spy pawn is leading at 17-15, more, a little more than halfway through the second quarter. Little mini Homestand for the Spy Ponders over the weekend. They play Sunday, January 5th here at the Toslowski Gymnasium, a non-league game at 3 o'clock against the Mustangs of Medford High School. We'll have, tele we'll have that uh, telecast for you. And Zalington looks to uh, win a couple games here in a home weekend tonight and on Sunday before then. On Tuesday, they'll travel to Watertown. It actually looks like Arlington, looking at the schedule real quickly, with four of their next five games, including tonight's here at the Tozlowski Gymnasium. Tonight's game, the home game against Medford on Sunday, then at Watertown on Tuesday the 7th, back home on the 10th against a very, very good Belmont team. Apparently even better than last year's team that made quite the run and kind of relied on one player. But uh, more of a team aspect this year for Belmont and a better team. And then Arlington hosts Wakefield on the 14th. So four of the next five here at home for the Spy Pawners. Come on down and join them live, or we're happy to have you check out our telecasts as we have over the last several years. Clock at 344, that's a good call there as a traveling violation is committed by Winchester. As the big fella, 32, Pinar tried to take it into the lane and slid the pivot foot for a traveling violation. Spy Pawners with a two-point lead, a chance to create their largest lead of the game. John Jock into the paint. Newton fakes, pulls up, now gets it to Ho. Ho's gonna fake that foul line jump shot into the lane, floater, get the roll, no, fights for his own rebound. And uh, it's Shaquille up with it for the Sachems. 3.13 remaining, second quarter. A little no-look pass there, did not work. Here comes Jean-Jacques to the cup with the right hand, lays it in. Beautiful move there by Marcus Jean-Jacques, and the Spy Pond is now lead it by four, their largest lead of the game, 
with under three minutes remaining. Second quarter, now we're going to get a foul committed by Henry Burns. Third team foul against the Ponders. Winchester is still stuck on five. Winchester has yet to commit a foul here in the second quarter. They had five at the end of the first quarter and remain at five. Spy Pond is now with three, as I mentioned, and a couple more to give before we have to worry about free throws for the Sachem. Now they tried to run a, a inbounding play, a high lob play, but I think it was Miles Hess that got a hand on that and uh, knocked it away. Spy Pond is get the steal. Miles Hess to the baseline. That's a tough shot. Fade away lefty away from the baseline, no good. Now Winchester has the numbers ahead of the pack. A nice little move there. Looking at his hand as if to say, I got hit on the hand too, ref, was Andrew Murray, but he gets the bucket and halves the Arlington lead. 19-17, 18 remaining, first half. Hess has made a couple. Now he's made three. Miles Hess, three. Three-point field goals here in the first half. He has nine. Spy Pond is now again achieving their largest lead of the game. 22-17, Ponders. And on a hand check foul, and I think that's gonna go against Jean-Jacques. I believe that's his first. Fourth on the team. A minute 52 remaining, first half. Dennis Ho out of the Allington lineup. And I believe it's um, Newton back into the game for Arlington. He got a little break there for a couple minutes. Man-to-man -man defense on the post by Rowan Newton. Good defense. Tough ball away shot there is good. That's a nice move there by Pinar. And Pinar now has four. Arlington leads by three. Buck 25 remaining. Opening half. Well, Hess has got to be careful there, right near the division line. Now a little hand check foul there committed by Chagru. I believe that's his first, sixth on the team. So that was the one that Winchester could waste. They had one to give. Next foul by Winchester will result in Arlington being in the bonus. Minute 16 to go, first half. Arlington up 22-19. Arlington... Passes the ball into the backcourt, which is legal on any inbounding play. To go into the backcourt. And a full 30-second shot clock, which is now down to 20 for Arlington. And now going to get Arlington on a moving screen. Philip Cherry picks up the foul on a moving screen. And for Philip, that's foul number two. Let's see how Coach Woods plays this with his tri-captain with just a minute and five to go. Selecting for now at least to keep Phillip in the game. Risking that third foul. Hopefully he'll be careful here and not pick it up as tri-captain J.J. Capillion is at the table. And I think he'll probably replace Philip Cherry. Given an opportunity. Six on the shot clock for the Sachems. Good defense by Allington. It's going to have to result in a long three-point shot, which is off the mark. Did that hit the rim? It did not. They did not reset the shot clock, but on the offensive rebound, a foul committed by Allington. I believe that goes against Rowan Newton, his first, and the sixth on the Ponders. Quinton Pinar at the line for two. Each team now with six team fouls. Pinar's first free throw is no good. And sure enough, Cherry will check out of the Allington lineup and J.J. Capillion will replace him, the tri-captain, with his first action of the evening. 35.5 seconds remaining, first half. Ponders by three. And it remains three as Pinar misses both free throws, but the ball was kept alive by Winchester. Now great hustle by Hess. And Coach Woods is not happy about that missed free throw being recovered by Winchester. He immediately made a substitution with Dennis Ho checking into the lineup. And I think Wood, Coach Woods is 
really frustrated because, geez, you never want to see a team get an offensive rebound on a missed free throw. When you have a defensive rebounding opportunity, there are four defensive players on the lane and only two offensive players, not counting the shooter, who has to wait until the ball hits the rim before he can enter into the lane. So four of your guys against two of their guys, you got to get that rebound. Arlington did not. And then, because of the loose ball and the great hustle, by the way, of Miles Hess to maintain possession, Coach Woods felt like he had to burn a timeout because Hess was in trouble of possibly losing the ball, possibly traveling, a lot of bad things could happen. And uh, Coach Woods elected to save the possession, but that could be costly in the second half as Allington has to burn a timeout. So let's set the picture here, 29.7. So technically, Allington can't settle for a final shot, but seven tenths of a second, probably not gonna make much of a difference. So in theory, Allington can hold for a final shot. And um, no baseline privileges here. Hess has to remain in his designated spot. Gets the ball into Jean-Jacques. So you got Hess, Burns, Jean-Jacques, Capillion, and Ho, the five for the Ponders. Now a foul committed. Oh, wow, bad foul there by Andrew Murray. Again, Winchester committing a foul. That's probably, I want to say, three fouls that Winchester has committed right at that table area, either on one side of the, of the division line or the other. So three of their seven team fouls have been fouls some 40 feet away from the basket. Now sometimes those are good hustle fouls, but when you're at the limit, you really don't want to commit that foul. But worked out okay for Winchester as Hess unable to hit the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. And now Winchester can hold for a final shot and a chance to possibly tie this game if they were to hit a three with the final shot. Five seconds to go. Good hustle there. Good hustle by Burns again. Ball's loose, see if someone can get off the shot. Capillion comes up with it, throws it up. No, well after the buzzer. And that will be the end of the first half. The score at the end of the first half. The Arlington High School Spy Ponders 22 and the Winchester High School Sachems 19. We'll be back with second half action. Two boys, Francesco with a shot. It's good! It's back to school time in Arlington, and that means that action on ACMI is about to pick up. Spy Ponder football will kick off the season at home against Cambridge on September 13th at 7 p.m. Tune in for our live coverage on the Education Channel or streaming online. Boys and Girls Soccer both look to follow up on successful 2018 seasons, and hopes are sky high for each team going into the 2019 season. ACMI will be bringing you all of the home games and select away games. Check our schedule for air times. ACMI sports broadcasts are volunteer productions and we need your help to cover the games. If you are interested in getting involved in learning our, about sports production, contact us at sports at acmi.tv. See you at the games. And welcome back to the Tozlowski Gymnasium, getting ready for second half action. I'm, I'm pleased to be joined, at least for a little while here, and hopefully longer, former Arlington coach and current athletic director, John Bowler. John, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So, Coach, first of all, congratulations on your new job. Tell us how things are going for you transition-wise, from the bench to the office, if you will. Oh, yeah, it's been great, you know, to um, work with all the coaches, uh, the student athletes, parents, faculty, um, you know, everyone's been so supportive. It's made my transition very easily. Good for you. Now, Coach, as we get a, before we start the second half, Alex, you're going to get a, a look behind the Allington bench there. And one thing I always love about these games in between, um, you know, uh, break for the, for the college kids is the return of a lot of the, the players, your former players, and Coach Woods as well. So uh, maybe you can rattle off a couple, recognize a couple of guys. I think I saw Nick Corrales and uh, James Gascoigne and... Uh, um, uh, McGilvery, Stephen McGilvery, I think I know. So anyone else there that yeah, you want to uh, mention? Joey Pazia, oh, Sam, yeah. Sam Swift, um, Adrian, Adrian Black, Peter Clifford, Alon, Alon Science Grant. Uh, I saw Brendan McNamara here as well. Excellent. Um, yeah, so I mean, that was one of the things we wanted to build is have, you know, having the players you know, keep coming back you know, even after um, you know, they graduated and moved on. Because um, you know, that's um, you know, a sign that you know, you're doing something right in the program. Excellent. Now, of those 
of your most recent past players, a couple of them are playing in college, right, as we resume third quarter action here, and you're going to reach and foul committed by Winchester's number three, Philip Chagru. Um, James is, play is he playing at Wentworth? Uh, J James is at Emerson. Emerson. He's, he's hurt this year. So he, he is. He had, um, so he's got, he's, uh, he's sitting this year out, but it'll be, he's, on, he's on the team, but we play next year. Okay. Uh, Sam Swift is at Wentworth. He's playing at Wentworth. Yep. Uh, he just started there. Um, yep, so he just, he'll be, he's a freshman at Wentworth. Excellent. Um, Dom Black is playing at RPI. Colin McNamara at WPI. Um, so, yeah, we have a, a bunch of guys playing right now. Miles Hess with the two-point basket, a rare two-pointer for Miles, as he now is in double figures. And... Uh, talking with Coach Woods, it was uh, kind of a slow start for Miles, but he had a, a good game in the consolation game, uh, from what I understand, against Cathedral, and Coach Woods was hoping that that might get him going here for the next few games, and sure enough, he's got 11 points just about halfway through the game. Yeah, I mean, Miles is a, is, a, is a really good shooter. You know, every sh every good shooter has times where they're not going to make shots, but, uh, you know, the last game he shot the ball well, and today he's shooting the ball with confidence, and uh, it's great to see because, uh, you know, he's, he's a kid that deserves to make shots with all the work he puts in. Damn. Well, Arlington with a five-point lead. As Cherry took it into the paint, but he was double-teamed, ball stripped away, and now back come the Sachems the other way. Now, of course, Coach Woods was with you, if not the whole time, the majority of the time when you were the head coach. Do you think there'll be any substantial changes in the team that, that you um, would point out? Yeah, no, I think, you know, we're, you know we, he was with me all 11 years, okay. so, I mean, I think, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's doing some stuff that's the same, but he's definitely that'll put a lot of stuff in that's different and... Uh, but he was a big reason why we were so successful. So, I mean, he's going to be, um, you know, successful as a head coach. And, um, you know, I enjoy watching him coach. You know, he's a good friend of mine and, uh, you know, a great basketball mind. Ooh, looked like Jean Jacques might have got away with a little travel there. Arlington does a nice job breaking the press. Didn't result in an easy shot, but they'll be able to set up their offense halfway through the shot clock. Here's Newton for three. He's got a nice shot, coach. Yeah, yeah, he, he has great form. He's, he's, he's made a bunch of shots for them during the season. Uh, just, you know. You can't do that. Great call by that official. That was a rule change about five or six years ago that you can't run out of bounds on your own like that and then become involved in the play. So a great call there by the official, a violation committed by Matthew Hugh for the Sachems. Now, if you just naturally go out of bounds, you can come back in and play, participate in play, but not like that. Is Cherry, and he'll be called for a traveling violation. And Coach Woods, I don't know that he agreed with that call. He's going to go talk to official Wayne Pandolfo for that one. Here's Coach Woods with a, his rendition of what just happened there. <laughs> now, you guys still playing in that uh, adult league? Oh, nice play there by Winchester, resulting in a backcourt cut for Shaquille, lays it in. You guys still participate yeah, in the Arlington Men's we, League? We're coming off. We won the title uh, this last winter. You, you know. did? Would you get some new blood? Uh, we got some. <laughs> the, we got some close to thirty, a little there, over thirty okay. year olds that have helped go. us out. So. All right, that, close to thirty, huh? Yeah, a little, little over thirty. I know what that means in that <laughs> league. Uh, Steal here by the Sachems, and the Spy Pond is now lead at 24-21 with five and a half to go in the third quarter. A pull up jump shot there is no good. Now a good, good little follow there, and that's number 33, Kraft, who's able to get the put back and put it up and in and cut the Allenton lead down to one. Yeah, second chance points are gonna will hurt you. Gotta make sure you box out. Hess with a little pull up yeah. shot there is nice for two. And Hess is getting it going. He's got a Baker's dozen. Yeah. Pond is back up by three. Yeah, he's got. I mean, he's got a, just a beautiful shot. I think lefties always look when they have good form. Look, look like you know, looks great. Now, another thing, and I want to talk, we're going to maybe get a chance to talk to Coach Woods after the game on Sunday, but a relatively young Arlington team. Um, I thought Miles Hess was a senior. I just looked at my chart, he being a tri-cap, and he's only a junior, so it doesn't look like Arlington only has a couple of seniors on the team. Yeah, yeah, they're very, they're very young. They're, you know, we lost a lot, a lot of seniors last year, and... Um, a couple of kids to private schools, so we, I mean, we, you know, there's a lot of kids playing that you know, haven't played, haven't had much varsity experience, right. but... Uh, so I think the first couple games, you know, you know, a lot of nerves playing your first couple of varsity games. But True. I think they, uh, the last few games, they've, you know, they've, they've played well. Um, and they, you know, they're really uh, playing strong tonight. And I think Arlington also 
again, talking to Coach Woods beforehand, I think after a couple weeks more, they're going to be bolstered by the return of a couple players. There's an exciting freshman named Jaden Williams that we've heard some great things about, and also a junior guy named Luca Ruggiero, who I guess is a, a pretty good shooter and a good defensive player as well. So that will, of course, help Arlington. According to Coach Woods, that would probably be two of Arlington's, say, top seven or eight players. And so they're going to be reinserted into the, not reinserted, but inserted into the lineup. And that, I think, will give Arlington a big boost as well, don't you? Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're the two guys that would be rotation players if they were healthy. So, uh, you know, to add depth depth to the, the, the team would be huge. Um, you know, they Luca's got Luca's one of the probably the best shooters on the team. And um, Jaden being a freshman, you know, he's very, I, you know, I saw him play a lot in the summer and, and as an eighth grader on the travel team. He, you know, he's going to be a very good player. Now steal by the stage. That last drive, a little coast-to-coast -coast drive by Sean Goglin, a big, tall junior, but he didn't get the layup. This is the first action of the evening. Winchester's gone probably nine or ten deep now in this game. Allenson's probably used nine or ten themselves now. The three-point shot there is off. And that's number 11, Kraft. His three no good. Scott Pond is holding on to that three-point lead. 325 remaining third quarter. Take Here's Hess to the basket, lays it up, can't get the roll. And the rebound by Winchester. So now put your AD hat on for a moment, Coach. It was a pretty good fall season for the Spy Ponders, was it not? Two soccer teams had good runs, didn't they? Yeah, we had just both soccer teams made the state tournaments. Girls made it to the, um, the North Finals. Um, the field hockey team made the state tournament the first time in um, a, a 10 years. Golf made the state tournament for the first time in a while. Uh, football, I, I think they won three out of the last four games, um, including Thanksgiving. Um, swimming had a great season. Good. Uh, cross country finished strong. Um, yeah, the great, great. You know, all the teams did very well. Vol girls volleyball finished strong. So, um, yeah, very good fall season. So ho Sh hoping to build on it in the winter. Shagru with the basket on the last possession for the Sachems, and that shot there by Hess no good. Now the Sachems throw it away. So. 2.25 remaining third quarter. Spy Pond is 26-25. And you think this will be the identity at Arlington? There's going to be a lot of low-scoring defensive games. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's... Um, although, yeah, I the, think although the Winchester, the Lexington game was in the 70s, so I guess that might not be totally true. Yeah, I think as yeah, the season goes on, you know, they, they'll get more comfortable with the offense and shots will fall. And, um, you know, Coach Woods will, you know, whatever style can get the W. If it's you know, playing faster, he'll do it. If it's playing slower, you know, he'll... He's, uh, you know, he'll, he'll adjust to whatever team they're playing and how, you know, our team is playing. For Arlington, number 21, Aiden Wood McGinty into the lineup. He gets the pass there by Newton. Shot no good, but he was fouled on the play. He'll go over the line for two. Good pass there. That's good look. By yeah. Rowan Newton. Yep, great pass. Big guy was in the right spot for the ball. It's Aiden. nice to pass yep. the ball every once in a while, you know. Yeah, you know. Okay. So, I don't mind passing. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you look at Worcester State's all-time assist leader uh, in the record books. Oh, so, boy. You know. Is your arm long enough, though? <laughs> do you want me to pat it for it? <laughs> That's good to know. I didn't know that. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. Substitution for the Sachems. That's number 33, Gus Craft, the tri-captain into the lineup. And it looks like um, the, the iron of the league again will be Belmont. Yeah, Belmont. Ruby Belmont, Ginty. Belmont will be tough. They have, um, you know, they return three players, uh, three, you know, one, three of the top players in the league, and uh, so they're very good. And they had, a, you know, they had, a, they had a great year last year, and um, you know, they, they, you know, they're, they're the defending champs, so they're, they're the team to beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that they gave Tech Boston the two-time defending Division II state champion a pretty good game uh, over the weekend, I believe. Yep. Yeah, Tech Boston's been phenomenal the last couple of years. So what's that? Now, that's a team that used to, the school has a different name. Who's that, the old? I honestly don't know. Okay. I, yeah, I think, it, they, I think the name else. changed, yeah, a yeah. little, yeah. And Allington with a minute and a half remaining. A little flip shot there by Newton, no good. Allington's been a little snake bit here in this third quarter with only four third quarter points after outscoring Winchester. 15 to 6 in the second quarter. So it was a great second quarter for Allington. And third quarter, the offense has stalled a little bit. Here goes. Oh, good. That's good. There's Rube McGinty there. Did a nice job keeping that alive. Thought he was going to tip it in, but no. And so coming up on the final minute, and Winchester will take a timeout. So we're at 26 25 with a minute 10 to go. Winchester with six. 
third quarter points, and the Ponders with just four. So uh, the offense has spotted here for both teams yep. in this third quarter. Yeah. I mean, besides Miles, I mean, how many does Miles have? Miles has 13. 13, yeah. Besides Miles, you know, Miles is shooting the ball well tonight. Like, I mean, he had some great blocks earlier in the game, and, like, and he rebounds extremely well. I mean, I, he, I mean, he must have close to eight, nine rebounds. Um, you know, he, you know he, he, can, he does a little bit of everything. He's, you know, tall, he's got long arms, you know, he affects, affects shots. Um, you know, I think it's, this is a great game for him to build on. Well, as you mentioned, and as we mentioned in the telecast and talking to Coach Woods beforehand, really only, as I look at this uh, lineup really quickly, J.J. Capillion returning player, Miles Hess, um, Philip Cherry, of course. Those might be the only three returning yeah. players from the team. Yeah, they're, they're the only three um, that, you know, that were on the team last year. Um, so yeah, it's, that's why it's um, you know it's a lot of a lot of new kids on varsity. Their first varsity experience. A lot of them played other sports. Uh, um, some, there's a couple of vars a few varsity football players, varsity volleyball players. So they, you know they've played in varsity events. But you know I think you know your first few games as a varsity basketball player, it takes time to get used to, get the nerves out. Um, I mean, they're all varsity level players. They just got to play with confidence. Yep. And as so as I, my point being that this is the first look we've had, or now the second home game for a lot of these players, and um, I'm impressed with the athleticism of Dennis Ho. He looks like somebody, maybe raw basketball-wise, as the flip shot there by Gus Kraft gives Winchester the lead, and I'm wondering if he's one of those just athletes that's gonna turn into a good basketball player, but he just seems really super athletic. Yeah, he, he probably, I think he, he, he's on our varsity volleyball team as one of our best players, uh, you know, very athletic. I think, you know, he hasn't played, bas he's probably played basketball for three or four years, so it's, uh, Yes, with a long three, no, and now Woog McGinty will be called for an over-the-back foul. So Interestingly enough, Allington's first team foul here in the second half, Winchester's committed three. Yeah, so yeah, I think Dennis, I think the more he plays, the better, you know, he'll get more fundamentally. So if he had a nice, had a nice shot fake, pull-up jumper. Uh, so pull-up baseline yep. jump shot seems like is what he, he likes to take. Yeah, but he's very athletic, very good defensively. About a two-second differential between the, not even, maybe less than one-second differential between the two clocks. So Winchester, in theory, could hold for a final shot here. And okay. this hole right there on the on cue makes the steal. Jean-Jacques ahead of the pack, and the Ponders retake the lead. Great defense there by Allington, and Jean-Jacques finishes it. And Allington with a chance to close out this quarter with a one-point lead. Let's see, last shot here by Winchester at the buzzer. No, rebound put back would not have counted anyway. And that's the end of the third quarter. Yeah, those are the little things like Winchester could have held for the last shot, turn it over, and we get a basket. You know, those, those, those end of quarter possessions are huge. Um, you know, you got you know, it's a great, great job by Arlington getting a turnover and an easy basket. So true because um, you know the, the Winchester looked like the worst case scenario they're going to do. And, and you know, again, as a coach, you'd rather be up one than down one. I would imagine going into the final quarter. Maybe it doesn't make that big of a difference. But you have the ball, you're up one, and then to see the other team get the ball, go down, score, and take the lead on you right at the uh, in the last 10 seconds, probably a little disheartening for a head coach. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely a, a frustrating thing as a coach when you, you, can, you can hold for the last shot, and then all of a sudden you're giving up a basket, you know, and it changes the momentum of the, of the game. Um, you know, but, you know, fortunately that was for our team, not, you know, not Winchester. Right. So the Spy Pond is lead it by one, entering the fourth quarter as they were outscored in that quarter, but barely. And Winchester had eight third quarter points, Allington with six. So a very low scoring game here tonight, but uh, as A.D. Bowler mentioned to us a little while ago, you know, you have to do whatever you have to in certain games to win. And this is kind of a, a rock fight, you know, almost like an old school GBL type of game. And, Let's see if Arlington can pull it out here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I know. One of the things you know we always preach, and I know Coach Wisdom is getting single-digit quarters on defense, and you know they didn't score a lot, but they held, you know, Winchester to a single-digit quarter, which is huge. Yeah, well, two out of three of the quarters Arlington held Winchester to single digits. Only the first quarter when Winchester had 13. So Arlington accomplishing one of their goals for two out of the three quarters at the beginning of this game. Now eight seconds on the shot clock for the Sachems. Shaquille into the lane, tough shot, no good. Good, good rebound. Good rebound by and push. Great look, great look ahead by Miles. Here's Ho. Inside, oh. they try to get it to Woog McGinty. Ball's kicked. New shot clock for the Spy Ponders. In the public schools, they reset to the full 30. 
Trying to get a shot on the corner here. Oop. Says Jean Jacques going to go to the rack. Now he oh. kicks it back out to Ho, but the ball is out of bounds. And it'll be Winchester ball. Now Marcus, Marcus had a great, great football year. He, you know, he was on the varsity football team, scored a lot of touchdowns. Um, is you know, running back? Running back, yep. Wow. And return man, had, I think, had a return touchdown. And, wow, uh, as a freshman. As a freshman, yeah, which is I mean, impressive. Usually freshmen don't get varsity letters in football, but no. uh, he, had, he had a great, great football season. And, so he's a very, you know, very skilled basketball, very talented basketball player. Um, you know, I, don't, I don't think he's come out tonight. I think you know he plays basically the whole game. But uh, he's a, you know, his future is very bright. Five on the shot clock, three-point shot from the corner by Shaquille. Good no contest. good. Look at Jean Jacques high for that rebound, battling against the player, probably a good five or six inches. His 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 inferior, his hit well taller, and uh, he comes up with a held ball. And on the alternating possession rule, will be Arlington ball. A great, great hustle by Marcus. And we're still stuck at 28-27 ponders, but um, just over a minute played here in the fourth quarter. And now they're going to get a reach-in foul against Shagru. For Shagru, I believe that's his third. Team's fourth. Six and a half remaining in the basketball game. Ponders up by one. Baseline drive by Ho, he gets it to Burns, and Burns lays it in for his first basket of the evening. Great, great drive, great finish. Henry, Henry, was all, Henry was one of the varsity football players. He had a solid year on the football team. A good interior pass there by Winchester results in an easy two for Degnan. Now Degnan, he didn't start the game, but he's come off the bench with eight points. He's the, actually Winchester's leading scorer. He's been pretty tough down there on the low post. He was also an all-scholastic uh, quarterback for the football team. They, they, had a, they had a great run, came one game away from the Super Bowl, I believe. Ooh. But he was MV, MVP of the Middlesex League. And now Burns will be called for a traveling violation. 5.52 remaining, fourth quarter. Ponders clinging to the one-point lead. Knocked out of bounds, it will remain Winchester ball. A great deflection by Henry in the passing lane. Tough place to inbound the ball there. Seven on the shot clock for the Sachems. Three point shot by Campbell is no good. Burns there for the rebound. Allington with the ball, a chance to increase their lead. 5 20 left fourth quarter. 30-29 Arlington. Oh, good drive. Oh, he oh. gets hammered, and he'll go to the line for two. And he felt that one, I think. Now the good, now the great drive. Uh, Winchester you know, definitely wasn't going to give the easy layup. Tommy Degnan will commit that foul, and as John mentioned, uh, Degnan a football player, and he got a pretty good lick there on Ho, and let's see if Ho can knock down these free throws. First one rolls around and in. Degnan out of the Sachem lineup, replaced by Gus Kraft. Five team fouls now committed by the Sachems. Arlington just with that one. So the foul situation favoring the Ponders. Oh, beautiful shot there. Knocks them both down. He has four points on the evening, and Arlington lead is back up to three as we approach the five minute mark of the fourth quarter. Arlington changes it up here, a little 2 2 1. There's uh, sneaking in again. I think that's been a couple of times now that um, Shaquille has snuck in the back door against the Arlington Press. Yeah, and Winchester did a good job there. Yeah. Ooh. And Miles Hess will be called for a player control foul. Yeah, 23 here. He had a really solid game last year versus us here. Uh, when they beat us here last year, uh, he, played, he played great. And when all was said and done, who ended up with the, um, the all-time record? Did Gascoigne surpass McNamara, or does uh, Colin McNamara still hold that you know, career percentage win? Did you keep track of that? Yeah, yeah. At the end? Col Colin, still had the, okay. Colin still had the most wins. Okay. 
quite a stretch there for the Spy Ponders. I'm not sure what year it was, but the year that you guys lost to, I guess it was Danvers. Yep. Up at the, um, up in, um, in Lowell, yep. the Songus. Yep. That was the year. Yeah, no, I, I was, I think about that game often and how, you know, without, you know, one possession game, how, what I would have done differently. <laughs> I think that's well, what. Now, great job there by Arlington on the initial miss by Newton. A couple of follow up chances did not go, but now Miles Hess will go to the line for two. I think as coaches, you kind of remember the losses a little more, uh, you know, thinking what, what you could have done differently, but. That, that team was, you know, 24 and 2. And that team won the state championship, 11. right? Yeah, Danvers was undefeated. You know, we gave them the best game in the tournament. Um, you know, that, you know, that, you know, our Arlington team that that, that kind of set the tone for you know the next few years uh, and where we are today um, with that group. You know, with a bunch of we had 11 seniors. They all played together in travel team growing up. You know, I think we had nine of them were captains in other sports. Um, you know, just a great. You know, going to practice was like them just hanging out and, uh, as friends, and it showed on the court every time they played. They trusted each other and believed in everything we did and, you know, never made the same mistake twice. Great group of kids. And then Miles ended up, is he still playing professional soccer? Yep, Miles, Miles uh, is in the third year professional soccer. He actually made uh, the all MLS team, the top, uh, top 11 players in the MLS this wow. year. This was the first year he started. Wow. Um, and then he signed, I think he signed like a five year extension with Atlanta with United. Atlanta? Yep. So he's, uh, wow. he's doing great. He had his first two. Oh, great job there by Henry Burns tying up the Winchester player, but this time on the alternating possession rule, it will be Winchester ball. Honda's lead it by two, 33 31, 351 remaining fourth quarter. Miles also had his first two United States um, team appearances, which is huge. Oh, really? Um, yeah, this past um, this past year. Wow. So um, that's pretty cool. Oh, yes, yeah, pretty pretty unbelievable. One Good of the best him. best twenty players in the country. And a great kid. Yep. Now you were you were coaching when Phil Barlow was here, correct? Nope, nope. Yeah, no. I, I watched Phil play a lot. Phil Phil was a great player here. That was another year that. Um, Arlington, I thought, really had a good chance in the state championship. I think East Boston went on to win that year. Um, Arlington lost a tough one as the putback there is no good. Arlington lost a tough one. I was talking to someone about that just today, as a matter of fact, because I was playing old man basketball in Burlington, and there was a game, I think it was a uh, North semifinal against Westford Academy yep. at Burlington High School. Yep. And um, who was Arlington's big man? Was that... Um, uh, was it Dimitri? It was Dimitri. Yep. And on, <laughs> there was this play... Now a uh, moving screen. I guess that's going to be on Henry Burns for Arlington. So a couple of tough calls going against Henry here in this fourth quarter. Um, but there was a play, and I think it was even in overtime, when Phil got blindsided on what apparently was a legal pick. He's down in the backcourt, like yeah. unconscious or seemingly unconscious. And the officials usually going to kill a play like that or maybe give Westford one attack at it. Westford didn't score. They, or they, or they attacked the paint and then kicked it back out. Thought maybe we'd get a whistle. And then in the ensuing action... Um, Dimitri fouled out. Oh. There's now a kicking violation called against Arlington. So on one play in overtime of a you know one two point whatever game, Arlington lost their best big man to foul trouble. And Barlow, I'm not even sure if he ended up coming back into that game because he got just ruined on a pick. Yeah, I don't I don't believe he came back in. So it was it uh, came down as a nice little lefty shot there by Kraft, and uh, now we're tied at 33. The timeout called, um, and I remember Neil Samad just came up huge. Uh, as a junior, I believe he was in that team, and he just kept Arlington in it. I think Arlington, and I'm not going to mention any names, even though probably because I can't remember for one thing, but I think Arlington had a chance at the end of the first overtime to win it on free throws, didn't get it done, and then once you went into the second overtime without your two best players, um, Westwood Academy ended up with the win, and then from there on in, it was the all same thing which would happen to you. Like every game after that, that Danvers won. It was a close game, and you have to say, well, if Danvers could, or maybe not even close, if Danvers is going to win by eight or ten or even two, Arlington maybe could have. And so you look at those are the two teams in my years of doing this that uh, I felt like Arlington had the best chances yeah. at state championships. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, and I also thought, I thought Colin McNamara, his senior year, um, you know, we were 22 and two. We lost to Brighton, who went on to, um, you know, win big in most of their other in their, all right. their other games to win the state title. And we just, you know. Uh, we fell short versus them. Uh, you know, Colin. Colin had an unbelievable uh, last game. You know, I think he had 30 plus points. Was just was tremendous. Uh, yeah, Brighton won it that year, right? Brighton won it that yeah. year. Yeah. So they, yeah. I think two, two out of three years we lost to the eventual, eventual state, state champ. So um, you know, 
I mean, it's, uh, you always have to play the best at some point. Um, but, you know, we, um, you know, those two teams, we had, had great opportunities. Um, and that Brighton game was here, correct? No, nope, uh, we lost the Brighton game here. That was the year after. Uh, okay. We lost that one at, at Wakefield High. Oh, yes, yes. But I think that's something that the basketball tournament committee should do better at, is trying to seed teams properly. You know, and, and, and you might know this better than I, but I know for sure they do it in lacrosse. That ball was deflected, so Allington could pick it up into the backcourt. Although, yeah. I don't know how close that was to being in the backcourt before um, Marcus touched it, so close call there, but now Allington loses possession here. But, you know, you, you have these teams that are, you know, 18 and two that are playing in weak leagues and they're the number two seed, and then you have good five, you know, teams that are 500 as a 12 seed. And, and you know, I mean, you see it even in, the, it's almost the worst in, say, soccer, where you have a, a small all-girls school that goes 19 and one, and then you wonder why they lose to, like, Conquer Carlisle in the first round, who's like 10 and 10, because yeah. these are better teams and play in better leagues. So I don't know that they do it in other sports, because like I said, I know they do it in the boys lacrosse. They try to actually seed teams according to strength of schedules, your, your, um, your division opponents, things like that. Yep. And I think they should try to do that more in the other sports. They're, they're actually, there's a vote this year is gonna be power seeding in all, in all sports. And it's not gonna be done by north, south. if it goes through, it's not north, south. It's all division two teams will get power seeded throughout the whole state. Um, so, like, if the best two teams end up being from the north, you know, they sh they probably won't play till the finals now. So, like, it'll if the vote goes through, it'll be the, po the top 32 teams will get power are in the tournament statewide. Statewide, if say Division Two, so top 32 teams make it. If you go 50 percent and you get in the tournament, then those teams play to get into the final 32, and then the, the 32 is just from the whole state, north, south, central, west. And so you, you might have to travel a first round sure. game to Springfield, right. but it's, it, you know, I think it's more fair than, you know, the North has kind of dominated in Division Two at least for a while, um, and, and South, and having to play, you know, in the semifinal or a quarterfinal game rather than the two best teams playing the state title. Yep. Uh, another great defensive play by Dennis Ho. He causes the turnover with exactly two minutes remaining in the game. And now a blocking foul committed by Winchester. And that's significant because one one. it's team foul number seven. And that will put Winchester over the limit. And arguably one of, if not Allington's best free throw shooter, Miles Hess, will go to the line for a one and one. Allington with only three second half team fouls. So big advantage for the Ponders down the stretch. Yeah, that, that could be huge. And knocks it down. The front end is Miles Hess, and Allenton regains the lead, 34-33, with exactly two minutes to go. Big shot by Miles, with, you know, look very pure off his hands. He got it. He's got them both. 16 for Miles Hess, and of course, when Allenton is only with the three team fouls, they can be aggressive defensively for these final two minutes, and that's to Allenton's advantage as well. That's huge. If you get, you know, caught in a bad matchup, you can take a foul and not have to put him on the line. 1.45 to go, Allenton by two. Three-point shot, top of the key by Winchester. Around the rim and out. Hess grabs the loose change in the corner, and Allenton can be patient here. Try to get a good shot and increase this two-point lead. Big rebound by Miles. Right. You want to use the clock here? 18 on the shot clock, 1.26 on the game clock. Hess, baseline drive, gets bottled up, kicks it back out to Ho. Ho's in trouble, Allenton goes to the ball. Seven on the shot clock. Jean-Jacques flips to the left hand. Ho with the tap back, no. Now he could kick it back out. He elects to put the shot up, no. And he's fouled on the play. Great job there by Dennis Ho. And I think that's something maybe with experience, maybe instead of going back up with that, maybe he could kick that back out. But he was able to draw the foul, so good job there by Dennis. They'll get two shots there. Yeah, it's a tough, tough call, either pull it out and use the clock or you know, try, to get, try to get the basket. Well, Allington doing a great job here down the stretch with free throws. Three of three in this last 45 seconds or so. And they lead by three. This is a big one to make it a two possession game. He does just that. 109 remaining, 37-33 Arlington. And his stop here would be critical for the Ponders. Final minute of the game, Allington by four. Oh. Here's Shaquille, baseline drive, comes up oh, and under, Shaquille. no. And gonna get the foul on Newton. 
A little bit of a late call, but probably the right call. Agreed. I, yeah, I thought it was late, but I think he did get hit. So now this will put the junior, Omar Shaquille, at the line for two shots. Now let's see if Winchester can be clutch at the line as Arlington has been the last minute or so. And the first oh. free throw rolls out. Yeah, just make sure you box out here. Yeah, Coach Woods was not happy in the first half in a similar situation at the end of the first half. And, you know, anytime you have four of your guys and two of their guys and they get an opportunity to keep it alive and he had to burn a timeout, if you recall, yeah. he was not too happy at that one. Shaquille, one of two, and now a substitution for Winchester. A little offense defense here as number 11, Henry Crafton. So now with a three-point lead, Winchester probably won't go to the foul yet because it's just a one-possession game as we approach 50 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Winchester has just one more foul or it will be a one-on-one -on -one for Arlington. So now, as a coach, do you try to maybe, that's a tough shot there. But a big one. Marcus Jean-Jacques with a big, huge basket for the Spy Pond as they lead by five with 34 seconds to go. It's big, it's big. No open threes. And a timeout will be called by Winchester. Uh, this is huge now because I mean, Arlington can take two fouls here, uh, you know, kind of slow, slow the game down, not, you know, get them out of a set. Yep, two to you, give. You figure the Winchester coaches are drawing something up here, they inbound to take a quick foul, you know, they got to try to set that up again or set something different up. Now with a one possession game, as let's just talk about the prior possession before Jean-Jacques made that great shot, if you know that there's a player on the other team that you think is a weak free throw shooter, even though it's a one possession game, would you have your players foul in a situation like that? Because you have the ch chance right now to kind of control that with just one more one on one situation, or you just you have to play it out being a one possession game. Yeah, I think. I mean, I guess it, you know, I, if, if if someone was re really bad, you probably can do it. But if if you have confidence in your defense that you can get a stop and push it down. Um, Play it that you way. You know, play it that way. But I mean, if you want to make, if you want to extend the game, I can see. You know, if, if a player's struggling and, and it's one on, and, you know, if it's one on one as opposed to two, maybe you do that. Cause, you know, two, maybe you're bound to make one. Right. Uh, where if it's one, maybe well, that's you what I'm saying. Yeah. In this exact this, situation yeah, with yeah. 18 fouls for Winchester, maybe um, Coach Fleming says, okay, if so and so gets the ball, we're going to foul him and take our chances on a one on right. one. Oh, man. oh, what a great inbounding play! It looked like one of your plays as an easy two for Pinar. And all of a sudden, it becomes a one-possession game. Now Winchester has to go to the foul, and it will be a blocking foul. I think Coach Fleming and the Winchester bench were hoping that Jean-Jacques stepped out of bounds before the foul, but that is not the case. And Jean-Jacques, Marcus Jean-Jacques, will go to the line for a big one-and-one. One. Yeah, we need, we need at least one here. Yes, yeah, so one would make it a two-possession game. Arlington has been very good at the line in this final two minutes of the game. And a big shot there by the freshman. He's having himself quite a game. I'm not even sure if he's ever subbed out of this game. He might have uh, gone this yeah. whole 32 minutes. Yeah I've, yeah, I've gone to a few games. I don't know if he's subbed out. He's, uh, he's a competitor. It's them both. Yeah. Marcus Jean-Jacques with a big basket and then two big free throws down the stretch here for the Spy Pond as they lead by five with 15 seconds to go. Three-pointer here is up and off the rim. No good. Rebound fought for. And they're going to say it was knocked out of bounds by Newton. Winchester ball. 8.6 seconds to go. Let's see if Arlington can defend this inbounding play a little better than that last one. They go inbounding play. Off Looks like leg. it's off Great the Winchester job. leg. And it is. It'll be Arlington ball. And that should wrap it up. Substitutions for Winchester here with 7.7 .7 seconds to go. And I believe Coach Woods is going to take a timeout. Not take any, it's a good timeout here by Coach Woods. Let's not take any chances. Let's design a play to make sure we get the ball in bounds. And then I'm sure Winchester will immediately foul. And so maybe Coach Woods can design something so that a certain player gets the ball on the inbounding play too. So he puts one of his better free throw shooters on the line. Yeah, uh, yeah I think, you know, that, if, you don't, you know you, you, if you don't use your timeouts, you lose them. So I think it's a smart timeout. I'd be looking for something over the top to the basket right now. Um, you know get it away from the hoops. So even if it gets stolen, they're, way, they're far away from the basket or just get it to a good shooter. 41-36 pawn, just 7.7 .7 seconds to go. That could be some type of back screen for Dennis Ho to try to get him out and maybe get a dunk here. <laughs> Wait, I, wouldn't be, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he can dunk.
It's like trying to get the ball in safe. No baseline privileges Ooh, here for Ellington. Yeah. There's the call. Cole wide open, and he does a smart thing. He dribbles it out towards midcourt. Winchester trying to foul him. They can't catch him, or maybe the coach just says, we're not going to foul, and that's going to end the game. And I don't think that's what Coach yeah. Fleming necessarily wanted. I think he probably wanted him to foul Dennis Ho and at least have the possibility of extending the game. But Ho did a great job. He didn't take the, uh, a tough percentage shot, and he dribbled out the clock. Yep, that was a great, great way to end it. Well, Coach Bowler, or AD Bowler, I'd like to thank you for joining me Not here no in problem. the second half. We look forward to seeing you during the course of the season. No problem, anytime. Uh, you know, thanks for thanks for all the coverage. You know, the kids love watching it. Uh, we appreciate all the you know all, all the time you devoted you know devoted to Arlington basketball through the years. But when I was the player, when I was the coach, uh, you know, it's great for the community. Thank you very much. I appreciate those kind words. John Bowl has been our halftime commentator. We appreciate him coming up, and we're just going to do a quick rundown of the scoring leaders. For Winchester, Philip Chagru had five points. Henry Kraft had two. Tommy Degnan with eight off the bench for the Sachems. Omar Shaquille with five. Andrew Murray with two. Quinton Pina with six. Gus Kraft had eight. And a total of 36. For the Spy Ponders, Philip Cherry had one point. Henry Burns had two. Dennis Ho had six. Jean Marcus Jean-Jacques with 11. Rowan Newton had five, well below his average of the season, but he was picked up because Marcus Jean-Jacques had his 11, as I just mentioned, and the ACMI player of the game for the Spy Ponders tonight with 16 points was Miles Hess, and the Spy Ponders win it by five points. So for Alex Van Thong, I'm Don Phelan. Once again, the final score here tonight from the Toslowski Gymnasium, Arlington High School 41, Winchester High School 36, Thanks for joining us.